those who were involved in making it come to life. Join us as we go. Behind the door. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Door uh, on the Grey Rooms podcast. I am Brooks Bigley, the uh, social media manager and Patreon manager for the Grey Rooms podcast. Today, we are with audio engineer and sound designer Jason Wilson. Hello. We also have music composer and design uh, J.M. Scherf. Hello. <laughs> and, and today we have the author of Thank You for Calling, our uh, Season 2, Episode 5 story, Alex Gallegos. Oh, how are you? Doing Hi. well, Alex. Welcome. <laughs> you appreciate it. Happy to be here. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, Alex, this story, wow, intense, amazing. Like, what? <laughs> I want to know right away, what inspired you to write this story? Like, wh- where did this come from? Huh. Um, what initially inspired it? Um, rage. Uh, <laughs> um, I can um, right. So I probably had this knocking around uh, in my head since mm-hmm. um, like 2009, 2010, really. Um, and just didn't really have a, a place for it. Um, you know, uh, I just came up with the initial idea of uh you know it'd be really great if somebody could just just stick it to these guys uh (laughs) because uh uh, all of these uh scams were were starting to come up around that time um the nigerian prince scam had, had kind of fallen out of favor and so had the uh lottery you hadn't entered scam um and i'm in it by trade so i kind of do this all the time i had just graduated college um so this was just starting to come up as a thing and it was like oh this this really sucks and it was really widespread um and uh law enforcement um still to this day really can't do anything about it um right because it's people that are way beyond anybody's jurisdiction you know even if you can even if you could report it to somebody, you know, what's your local police department going to do? You know, they're not going to fly over to India and, uh, and, and take care of that. Um, yeah. So that was kind of the initial um, seed for the story when I was a little bit edgier in my twenties. Um, just, yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, I just wish somebody would do something about it. <laughs> um, I feel but, you. Right. I think everybody does. Um, And certainly anybody that's uh, fallen for one of these scams um, and and kind of goes out to them. Um, But then the other piece, because initially I'll say the uh, the man on the phone um, who uh, Graham did an amazing job. Oh, absolutely. Um, Yes. And (laughs) round of applause. Graham was really fun well, to listen well, to do that. Uh, the, the, yeah, the Graham was really fun to do. Mm-hmm. Did great. Um, initially, the idea way back when I conceived of the story was, you know, that's the absolute hero of the piece. No questions asked. Just, yep, he he's great. And uh, it's, it's fine. And then uh, as I've mellowed out a little bit, <laughs> with the passage of time and also as i um did a little bit of of looking into some of the reasons people get into that um there are absolutely people that are just out to steal your money um and pretty much don't care about it um but i also actually found out that there are a ton of people that are pretty much getting scammed uh just as much as the people that are getting called, which really surprised me. And it was like, Oh, that really sucks. Um, yeah. And so to discover that that was the case. And I've also kind of been thinking a little bit about some of the, 
um, the online mobs that have just gone after people uh, <laughs> lately. So I tried to work a little of that in too. Um, and hopefully by the, by the time you're done, you come away thinking, you know, obviously you, you shouldn't have been doing that, but gosh, I'm not sure if you deserved um, <laughs> that level of, uh, of punishment and torture there. Um, right. And it's a little ambiguous. Maybe who, who uh, was the, uh, the bigger criminal there or uh, the bigger bully. Right. That's what got me is figuring out who who really is the protagonist and who really is the antagonist. You kind of you kind of used a bad guy to fight a bad guy. And then you also kind of made one of the bad guys look like not so much of a bad guy anymore. Yeah. So it you like really, you, you turn some on its on its head. It's really great. Well, as, as bad as the telemarketers are, they're not uh, slaughtering people. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Imploding their heads. <laughs> right. Way to go, just, just, that's so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Actually, so, you know, it's, I know it's kind of funny about that. The first time I read that story, when uh, Brian was like, "Got to read this one." The first time I read that, it, initially, I, I, I sat down. I was like, I, what, "What the heck's going on?" Oh, wait a minute. This is. And then I got into it because I, I actually had worked not in a call center ripping people off, but I was, you know, I worked for Sears uh, when I was in college a long time ago. And I had to call and renew people's magazine subscriptions or credit cards or whatever they were using. And I, I could relate. And then at the end, oh, man, I was I was loving. I was happy. I was excited. I, I, it was kind of weird how happy I was that he was popping heads and. <laughs> I needed a That's shower. Why you do what you do, Jason. <laughs> yes, sir. Well done. Yeah, yeah. I like how how just from beginning to end, you keep going back and forth. Like I thought at first, oh, he was the victim, and someone was going to call in and then torment him. And I thought, well, we've kind of heard that horror story before. And then you know, uh, the the man on the phone, his his tone changes, and you start to realize, no, wait a minute, no, he's the victim. And our little narrator here, he's the antagonist. Oh, this is interesting. And then it goes back the opposite direction. It just kept going back and forth. And it was just just amazing, um, an, an amazing evolution of the intensity of the story. Um, excellent job, Alex. Loved it. What, Thank what you. made you choose scissors, though? <laughs> They're very um, prominent. Yeah, you know, I, uh, I wasn't sure. Um, you know, I just tried to think, yeah, what would you find? around an office that somebody could uh could weaponize and that uh that was kind of the first thing that that came to mind um you know I, there there was there might have been a draft in there where there was something with a stapler and it was like ah now this is just gonna this is gonna be too uh cartoony um yeah. but especially you know once i once i got that image of in my head of the the helicopter blade spinning mm -hmm, it was mm -hmm. like oh that's okay that's a little chilling um very chilling yeah well yeah, it, was, it was neat i like to tell it was at telekinesis is that what that is uh the tele the, is that telekinesis yes yeah. yes okay yep. yeah gosh I can't remember. I, that's what i was loving about when i was reading it. i said okay this is cool. That's extra scary. This guy's this guy's long distancing his telekinesis to this dude. That's awesome. So, mm -hmm. yeah, pretty cool. And uh, telekinesis is the the superpower I always pick when somebody says, "What power do you want?" So it was <laughs> extra fun <laughs> listening to this. Really, my mine's always been channeling the channeling energy and lightning. I've always wanted to to have uh, the the control over electricity, essentially, like Raiden. Oh. <laughs> Well, like, yeah, like, like controlling weather kind of basically. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Okay. Also a solid choice. I would be able to stop time, I think. That could get boring though really quick because you'd probably stop time a lot to keep fixing little things here and there, I feel like. I don't know. That oh, would yeah. be a slippery slope there, I feel like. I don't know. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You just pause time and walk to work. You don't have to. Maybe you'll never be late. Never be late anywhere. Never Maybe be I'm late thinking about how to use these as superpowers. Right? Did you get relief? So can can I ask one thing uh, that that you don't have to reveal because authors never have to reveal? But um, is there 
can you share with us how the antagonist maybe was able to see what was going on? You know, uh, he, he was very good at, we, we don't know that he was in the building and we don't know that he was hacked into any camera systems, but he maybe it was part of his power. I don't know. I'm just wondering if you could shed a little bit of light on how our antagonist was so good at seeing everything going on as, as the story evolved. Sure. And that was kind of what I pictured just, uh, you know, that he would, was psychic basically. And just, uh, you know, you imagine, uh, or at least I would imagine that that would kind of be somewhat of a burden, um, uh, which would maybe explain the way that, uh, you end up behaving the way that he does. Um, which is, he's a little unhinged. It sounds like, um, uh, especially by the end of the story there, it's like, oh, this, this guy's bad news. Like, I don't think I want to hang out with him, uh, on, on a Saturday night is basically what I'm saying. Um, but that was at least what I, uh, figured. Um, but, uh, but I, you know, now that you say that, um, it's certainly possible that uh, that he did something else, you know, hacked into the uh, security system there or something. Um, he does yeah. have a background in I.T., so that would that'd be great, too. I didn't think about that. Right. But I would love for there uh, to be an alternate explanation that I didn't even think of. Um, that's great. I love it. Well, the ambiguity still serves the story perfectly because it adds to that kind of on the edge of your seat nail biting. Like our, our narrator doesn't know if the, the scissors are the only thing that's going to fly around the room and someone's head just exploded and he can't see, he cannot identify the threat anywhere. There's no visible threat causing these issues. So that really ratchets up the horror. So I wasn't looking for you to plug that or like, you know, it would have been better if you just told me where he was. I just was uh -huh. wondering if in your, your author's mind, if you had that place uh, set or not, because I think mm -hmm. ambiguity, ambiguity is great here. It's, it's perfect. It served it very well. Um, Alex, is this, the first time you've ever had a story produced or I, I, have you worked with other podcasts? I'm not exactly familiar um, with any of your stories being, you know, produced before. This, yeah, this is the first time I've uh, really had anything uh, produced. Um, I've uh, I've acted in a couple of things. Uh, which I'll, I'll talk about at the end during the uh, what are your upcoming projects section. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but yeah, this is the really the first time I've submitted every, anything. I've, I've written a couple of things on some writing prompts on Reddit here and there. And a couple of them, you know, got a few hundred hits, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. I think I published some stuff on on the odd website here and there uh, from time to time. Um, but when, like I said, I just had this knocking around without really a, a place to go. Um, and that was part of the reason I never really put pen to paper with it. Cause it was like, eh, you know, it, it's kind of just this, this short story that, uh, there's not a whole lot to it. It doesn't really fit in to a, a more grand narrative anywhere. And ultimately eh, where, where's the audience for it? And then the open submissions, uh, came up on the gray rooms and it was like well hold on it might be there um so it was it was kind of perfect um and i still it feels uh a little bit kind of like a miracle that this thing ever got done um like what do you mean what do you mean <laughs> well um I'm just for, well for starters um the the deadline for submission initially was like Friday, March 1st. Mm -hmm. And then you guys extended it on Twitter. You were like, hey, actually take through Sunday, March 3rd, which for a well-adjusted human being who is not the living embodiment of that poster that says, if it weren't for the last minute, nothing would get done around here. <laughs> um, you know, that, that would mean, Hey, you know, like make some final edits and, and make sure it's, <laughs> it's all polished up and great. And for me, mm -hmm. Matt, cool. I can watch YouTube videos on a Saturday um, because that's the sort of person I am. And, uh, and that's how I sent an email uh, on like Monday, March 4th at 1221 AM that started, Hey, it's still Sunday in two more time zones and had the story attached. So already I was like, okay, 
eh, maybe they're not even going to uh, accept it. And then like two days later, um, you know, not to talk too much about anything else, but white light heaven came out, which was like the most moving story I've ever heard. I listened to the podcast commuting to work and I like, I was like crying on my way to the office nice um, like actual tears and i was like Job great well and these are the people that i just sent my head explosion murdery call center story to i'm like okay well that was a fun <laughs> dream while it lasted hopefully not a lot of people will have read it so <laughs> well, well we, don't, we don't discriminate here at the gray room nah, man it was beautiful <laughs> And, and Alex, if, if I may say, uh, you should you should uh, know that your story has generated two thousand eight hundred and seventy three downloads. So uh, two thousand eight hundred and seventy three people have enjoyed your story. Mm -hmm. wow. So good oh. job, man. Good job. That's just to date. That's just to date. <laughs> yeah, that's just to right now. So uh, yeah, it released on the twenty fourth, and it's the twenty eighth. So in four days, which is uh, well done, man. Very good job. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just absolutely blown away. So, yeah. Thank you guys uh, so much for accepting it, producing it. You know, like I said, been a fan of the show um, pretty much since I stumbled upon it. I think like the second or third episode had been released and it was like, wow, this is this is really cool. I can't wait to hear where this goes. And uh, and so it's really an honor to be sitting here with you guys now. So yeah, we really appreciate it, man. It honors all ours and thanks for being a listener as well. Thank yeah. you. Well, if we could, if, and if we can talk about the production uh, really quickly of the story, um, yeah. Alex, were you at least, it's like, were, were you just thoroughly thrilled from beginning to end to hear Jason's kind of audio version and jams musical version of your story? Did like, did the piece, like the scenes that Jason set, did they meet what you saw in your head? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it came yeah. out like better than I ever could have hoped. Um, like once I once I got the email that that it was actually accepted and approved and, and you guys were going to go ahead and and produce it, um, I went back and I read it again um, and I thought, well, I wonder I wonder what it's what they're going to do for for this mm. piece, that piece. Um and and then when it was actually released last week, it was like, OK, well, I'm getting out the, the noise canceling headphones. Don't it don't anybody bother me. Um, this is my time. And yep. um, well deserved. And, oh, yeah. And uh, and as soon as I started the download and you guys gave me door number one eight hundred. Because, <laughs> because I, uh, I I was already wondering, oh man, what number am I going to get? And as soon as I saw that that was the case, it was like, oh, this is going to be something special already. But yeah, that the, the soundscape, it was perfect. Um, you know, it really felt like uh, like you were in an office um, there. So great work um, back there. It was like, oh yeah, I can like I think I heard the hum of the air conditioner at one point. Uh, back there it's like you know the, the sort of stuff that like you don't really hear in in a lot of other productions you know you hear like footsteps and that sort of thing and maybe you know restaurant sounds if the scene calls for it but it's like no that like everything right. that you need right. um like i think somebody was making copies at one point in the background if i'm not mistaken um yeah, sure. it's like oh yeah this is this is absolutely perfect it's like it, you're just sitting there um, yeah, Jason and then puts the, you right in the story. Totally does. Um, which is, you know, one of the reasons that um, I've always been a fan of uh, of the show. Um, mm -hmm. And then the music. Oh man, that was. I was. Yeah, I was that, already. That was G. <laughs> that was a <laughs> freaking a guy. <laughs> he just keeps besting Thank himself. You. Is that yeah? We, we I, too much. Well, they, yeah. you always have to try, right? Right. Exactly. Well, and and you succeeded. Um, I had I had a blast writing to this one. It was so much fun. I have to ask you which uh, which came first. Um, uh, was it JM? Uh, which is you? Wow, I said that's stupid. Yeah. Um, so was it your composition or uh, was it Graham's narration? It was Graham. Out? 
It was Graham. I uh, so I get the story. It's usually uh, you know it's like ninety nine percent complete. So uh, when I get the when that when I get the file and then I I write to that, and I was listening to the, I always listen in to a couple a couple times before I start writing, and in the middle of it, it gets real quiet and Graham starts going. <laughs> And I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> oh, and, yeah, uh, that was beautiful. I loved it. And, and I was, he's like, what's happening? He's like, oh, this little ditty, you know? And then he, he's like, something I'm working on. And I was like, I have to write that. I have to make that <laughs> song of music. So uh, I kind of have to give grandma writing credit. I already told him. Uh, but uh, yeah, and then I based basically the whole score off of uh, off that little line that, that he said. And I just went from there. I... Uh... I never would have even imagined in my wildest dreams when I wrote that, that that was going to be, that that was going to happen. But that just, that little moment was like, oh, chills up my spine. I loved it. <laughs> um, it. I mean, if I could borrow from Pulp Fiction, when I wrote that down, you know, I just thought it was some a cold-blooded thing to say. And <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, great. I'll just throw that in there. Um <laughs> And I had no idea you were going to do that. Um, but it was perfect. Loved it. Uh, Thanks, Graham man. gets some credit there, too. Graham is uh, quite the improv- improv- <laughs> improvisational actor. Yeah, he comes up with scenes really well. And, uh, yeah, of course, JM absolutely knows how to ice the cake. Something ferocious. Always but does. It was funny, though, because <laughs> I, I feel like uh, uh, Graham's the man on the phone, the the character was uh, even even though he was angry, I felt like it was kind of like whimsical, like he was like um, he was like the direct like the uh, in the in the uh, in the ring in the circus, like he was directing the circus. And the oh, yeah, thing yeah. Crazy. And that's, you know, and then with the way he was, uh, you know, he went into that little song. I I was like, that that's it. That's my. That's my, you know, my theme for the episode. It's kind of like upbeat and whimsical and, you know, um, you know, uh, it's just, I I I felt like the whole, you know, that just suited the episode. Right. He He was playing with them, man. He was screwing with them the whole time. That was a part, man. Do you do that a lot, JM, where you'll kind of seize on a certain idea from a certain part of the story and then that kind of suddenly builds your soundtrack? Uh, it depends. Yeah. Uh, situations. Sometimes, sometimes something pops out to me and I can work with it. This was yeah. blatant because it was actually. <laughs> there comedy. you go. Uh, but, you know, yeah, other, other times um, I listen to a whole episode and I'm just kind of like during the episode, I can be like, oh, I hear a violin here or I hear a drum here. And mm. then uh, it just kind of builds up from there. Okay, well, I, I was going to ask you, like, what inspired you to compose, but I feel like you've kind of gotten into that now and explained that. Yeah, this was this was a this was definitely a good track. My favorite has always been um, episode two, but then and then a, another episode comes out, and then I hear more of your music. I'm like, oh my god, I can't, <laughs> I keep, I can't say what's my favorite yet, Jam, because I know there's a whole bunch more episodes to come out. So That's I awesome. appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I'm also I try to. I'm trying not to make everything sound the same either, like the same style. I try to change yeah. the style every episode. I think you've done an amazing job at that. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank yes, you. sir. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it. Hey, hey um, Jason, um, what did you yes. do? There was a lot of cool, so to go back to that telekinetic thing, there was a lot of cool sound effects involving the scissors, um, different, different, like to me, my ear kept thinking like metallic sounds, like metal things being manipulated. Like what, what kind of things did you use to set those sound effects? Well, it's, it's kind of funny. This was actually, uh, to be honest, um, sorry, I had to move my mic there to be honest. Uh, the scissors were, was a, was an exceptional challenge. It was actually really hard um, because the, the sound effect database I have, you know, doesn't have spinning scissors and, and, yeah. and I could take a, I can't I, think why. Well, yeah, right. And, and, you know, I could take a, uh, I could probably take a, a, a blade off of a helicopter and just, a, just adjust the uh, pitch on it. But, oh no, I can't because what's attached to a blade of a helicopter, it's a helicopter with an engine. Right. And, Lots and, of other sounds. And you have all this background noise. So it was really hard. So Honestly, my, my kid, and, and this is the, the true fact, my son was playing with a, 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 a fidget spinner oh, and, and uh, he set it down on the, the countertop. 
And, and I heard it and I was like, okay, I can add a couple effects to that and adjust a pitch and I'm going to record that and that's going to be the sound. And so the actual sound of the uh, scissors, the best I could do on that was the, a fidget spinner on a, uh, a, a countertop in the kitchen. And, um, I mean, I thought it turned out pretty good. I, I mean, if Alex is happy with it, that's what matters. And, uh, yeah. you know, and, and other than that, um, you know, obviously just a slice is a slice and a, and a cluck is a cluck. And, and, you know, so mm-hmm, <laughs> that's mm-hmm. pretty much it. That you was the hardest part of this episode for me, though, was the uh, actual scissors. That was the hardest part. I, uh, I play a game, you know, just a little mental game when I'm playing or when I'm listening. Uh, to the gray rooms called what's that sound um just uh so my guess was a uh, um like a quarter being spun um, yeah that was me too pitch down um but that that makes so much sense got it i was i was wondering what you were going to use um yeah and, man and, you challenged me that was pretty tough it really was dude good job thank you nice. All right. <laughs> it was hard i i actually the beat perfectly honest a scissor a sound effect just by itself uh figuring out what i was going to do took me almost a day by itself just sitting here trying to figure out what i was going to do just with the scissors and that that honestly has never happened in any of the other stories i've done so hey man kudos (laughs) yeah absolutely yeah very excited with where this season is going we've got so many I think like different, I want to say different thinking authors. We're not getting authors submitting the same old tropes of horror stories. And I even used the word trope earlier with you, Alex, but you are so brilliant at turning the trope over on its head and then turning it sideways and then turning it again. You just kept, I I never knew which direction you were going in. It just made the story so much more satisfactory because of that. Um, so I'm really proud to add you to our collection of authors here. Um, yeah. You really, you really helped us bring yeah, our season to so much totally bigger and better. So thank yeah. you so much, Alex. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, I'm a sucker for less like, uh, I mean, I do like monster stuff, but man, you really want to, you really want me to do a story, make it something that could be real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, real mm-hmm. life like life is horrible and to sit here and think of uh, one, the job sucks. The guy has to do this job. And then you find out like, he's kind of like Alex said, he's kind of a slave, you know, right. he's, he's kind of being victimized as well. And then, you know, to have the victim initially, you know, Graham's character come out and then he's just swinging the big sword and you're just like, man, you, 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 you got it. Alex nailed it so good when he was describing it. You're kind of really chewing your fingernails trying to figure out who's the bad guy here and you're yeah. rooting for this guy at this time. And yeah. then you're like, oh, screw you. And then you're rooting for him. It's like, I oh, know, screw you. <laughs> and you go back again. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was Brilliant. it was fun. It was a roller coaster. It was really cool. I I I uh I uh um I compare it to the uh the pirate ship ride at the ro- at the theme parks. There you go. You're 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 on you're in the middle and at one point in time you're like I like you and then you swing over here. I like you. <laughs> and so you go all the way around and then come back through, and your brain's just all scattered. That's that's scissors. scissors. <laughs> <laughs> so so alex do you um do you have any exciting stuff coming out that you want to tell us about before um well i'm uh, i'm working on a, a submission uh for uh for season three uh which i will hopefully get out uh when it is midnight um you know in, in many more time zones because i think there's there's a couple of months still to go, <laughs> there you go. Yes, yes. Um, uh, so you know maybe i maybe i can swing it like you know a whole 48 hours uh in advance um but no promises <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'll give that a shot. Um, other than that, the ambitious um, fellow he is. <laughs> exactly. Uh, other than that, for the most part, I usually spend most of my time on the other side of the uh, microphone. Um, uh, I'm actually an actor uh, in a podcast uh, called Superstition. Um, oh. uh, you can find us at uh, Pod Superstition on Twitter. Um, uh, Graham has been in a couple episodes of that. Um, although, I mean, if, if, we, if we start listening to all the things he's been in, we could be here all night. Oh, um, see, he yes. knows. Alex knows. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Make a list of what he's not in. That is shorter. 
I, that's exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the better way to go. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, we are we're uh, currently in uh, season two uh, right now, um, and uh, it's written by the uh, amazing and wonderful uh, Sarah Kolb, um, and stars uh, Kira Apple. And uh, I've just been honored to be a part of that. Um, so that's my biggest project. And what was the name of that again? Just I, I have my pod catcher open. A superstition. Superstition. Thank you. Okay. Um, after the show, Alex, I will make sure to get all of that relevant info, and um, we'll include it in the show notes, uh, so fans of your story here and listening to this can go and easily find you in other places in the in the pod sphere. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Superstition podcast. It's us. All right, I'm I'm following you now. There you go. Just got another sub. Ding ding ding. Woo-hoo. Hit that bell. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's, it's always what I love to do. I love listening to uh, audio dramas and podcasts and audio books when I'm at work, and uh, I love new material. And Graham's in it. Come on. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's Guaranteed just be awesome. Yeah, it's been amazing to me how um, how tight knit the whole community really is um you know and i i fell in love with the with the audio drama podcast community um because i really loved the old time radio stuff i used to buy these uh cassette tapes at yeah. barnes and noble um because they release yes. some of the old shows um mm-hmm. and right you know, there with them. Yes. yeah yeah and and it looked like that art form was just going to be lost to time for so long because, you know, just I mean, nobody was obviously going to go back and produce that kind of thing. And then podcasting came around and all of a sudden it's like everything old is new again. And, yeah, it's a and here comes this Absurdance. art form that used to be the only way to tell a story before TV. And now here it is again. Um, and I just think that's the most amazing thing in the world. Um, when I was, you know, 12 years old, I never would have thought I'd have a chance to be in one of these, let alone write one of them. So, uh, it's been super fantastic. Absolutely. love it. Yeah. Podcasting is magic. It's such an accessible and just like you said, the community of it all, it's, it's amazing. Um, so we really 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 appreciate having you now being a part of our community Alan. we really thank you for for doing this with us thanks for uh for doing the interview with us we had a little bit of a setback this weekend but here we are we managed to hammer this out and and get it done and and, and share in your story it was amazing Absolutely yep my pleasure yeah and i look forward to seeing your season three submission too and uh keep yourself posted brother man because uh the gray rooms is also um looking to expand its uh brand a little bit uh, to uh one or two more different podcasts but it's going to be more of like a uh production thing like you're gonna you understand the quality you get from the gray rooms so if you hear another podcast come out it's uh, produced by the gray rooms well it's one of ours and it may be another podcast or two mm-hmm. exciting yeah it's gonna be fun Hey, um, hey, JM, do you have anything that you want to add? Or... Uh, we, don't, we always well, do the hey, actually, what are we working on, but we work uh, together, so. <laughs> well, I'd like to add uh, uh, thanks to all the, uh, the voice actors, uh, uh, Sh- uh, Shushan, uh, Margaret Ashley was in this, mm-hmm, uh, Graham, right. of course, and Michael Rigg makes his third appearance, uh, if you count writing and voice acting this season. Right. Yeah. Right. As the call center manager, so that's pretty cool. Um, Let's not yeah. forget one unspoken actress in this that I forgot about to put in the credits because, and I've caught flack guys on this, but uh, Papuya, the young lady, that's yeah. my wife. So <laughs> oh. Christina was in this too. So oops. Yeah, my we'll bad. I, I've caught flack all week. My bad. <laughs> Well, on that note, gentlemen, thank oh, you so I, much. I cut Jay um, off there, by the way. You can punch me in the face over a beer later. Well, I'm sorry, brother. Yeah, yeah, we got to figure that out. 
Uh, no, actually, I was, I was just uh, say that, you know, I'm, I'm working heavily on the gray rooms right now. Uh, I do have a, a website, Dark Matter Stock Music, where I sell some of my other creations that you could use in your videos or your podcasts. And, Go there. Uh, uh, you can license the music there to use wherever you want. And, um, and you know, that's uh, what I got going on right now. And if I may say in that regard right there, um, I actually stumbled across JM um, looking for a theme idea on YouTube. And um, everything he writes, if you like what the Grey Rooms is putting out musically, everything he writes is like that. It's golden. It's beautiful. And I highly recommend if you need something done, reach out to him because he is mm -hmm. extremely flexible. And man, I have had so much fun working with JM musically. And, and like he's He's such a great artist and a good friend. And I'm telling you right now, I will totally vouch. I always, I, I, I'm pretty sure you're probably sick of hearing it, JM, but every behind the door I sit here and I'm like, we got to talk about JM, you know, because yeah, I freaking I hear it, love yeah. JM music. <laughs> so seriously, if you're a podcaster, anything like that out there, you're listening to this and you want some audio, freaking reach out. JM, he, he will kill it. He will kill it. And his turnaround is ridiculous, too. So, yeah. Absolutely. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> no thank you man <laughs> you, you owe jason 20 bucks jam <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll have that beer one day man yeah, yeah it'll happen. Happen. It'll happen. <laughs> so, well as right. the as the producer of this though i also want to thank alex big time your story was phenomenal it really grabbed me by the uh you know, and uh it, it, it grabbed me by the scissors and gave him a spin and um you know <laughs> I really loved this story. It was a lot of fun to work on it. Uh, hats off to Graham too, because he really dug his hand down there because when Graham, he, I remember he sent me a message. He said, dude, this uh, actor has to be from India. So Graham went out there and he found a uh, regional correct, I guess if that's the right way to describe it, voice actor for the job who did a great job. Uh, but Graham really knocked it out of the park. So working with with Graham and JM and then Alex, your wonderful story. And I really can't wait for season three's just submission, man. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much uh, for allowing us to do it. You thanked us. No, sir. The pleasure was all ours. It's our privilege. You're the talent. We just made took what you gave us and made it what it is. So thanks, man. Appreciate it. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. <laughs> Everything that J Jason just said, that's how I feel. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then we got Brooks too. Brooks is all right. He's okay. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just pair it off of Jason. Yeah, I love you, Brooks. Way. <laughs> Shucks. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Alex. I, I really, personally, I I loved your story. I was really excited to read it and and be jerked around left and right, and then to wait to hear you know the final product when the story was done. So, kudos, bravo, hats off to you. Hopefully, no heads come off uh, around you anytime soon in the office. Just uh, do whatever, do whatever the tells you to do. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, you know, put mine in the drawer uh, when I got back to the office on Monday. You know, just, just to be safe. So uh, yeah. yeah, it should be okay. <laughs> well, that that does it for this uh, this episode of Behind the Door. Again, I want to thank uh, the Grey Rooms music composer, J.M. Scherf, um, the Grey Rooms audio engineer, Jason Wilson. What up? Uh, the author of Thank You for Calling, Alex Gallegos. And then, you know, there's just little old me, Brooks Bigley. Um, thanks, guys. Have a great night, and uh, we will see you in two weeks. Join us each week after every episode for another edition of Behind the Door. <laughs>